Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a review of my setup, my room that I have around me. I know only a handful of people are interested in this and I know this is more or less an archival document for the future to show where I've come from and kind of showcase a moment of time where I currently am with my sim racing setup in 2024. So one of the primary reasons why I'm doing this is I've had a couple of people in my in the racing league kind of inquire what kind of setup that I've got going on here. And the more the more that I realize it, the more and the more that I realize that it's kind of unconventional in a lot of different ways. And I wanted to kind of run down as much detail as possible to really show you what goes on in the inner workings of my weird demented mind. So this one's going to be a little bit interesting on how I'm going to showcase this. It's going to be through my phone here. Hello there. Hello. Hello everyone. <laughs> so first and foremost, this screen is, was my wife's grandmother's 32 inch TV. It's got this really weird problem where it like cuts off the very edge of the screen. So it makes it a little bit weird on a couple of different races where like your like your heads up display is cut off in a weird cup. Yeah, you can kind of see it with the Instagram logo there. Um, it's just here. It's making do for the time being. It's 32 inch screen and it is supported by the next level racing single monitor stand. Hello, that's my foot. And then we've got of course, the Fnatic GT DD Pro with its wheel. I actually did get the QR1 upgrade, so it's that nice metallic thing. And that is mounted on the Next Level Racing wheel stand 2.0. I'm running the CSL standard pedals, and as many of you have noticed with the with the recent review product, whatever you want to call it, talking about um, ops, planned obsolescence and just the issues with product add-ons, I got the next level racing seat. But a couple of things that you guys have probably already noticed here, I have a seven inch monitor here and a seven inch monitor there. I want, I'm trying to remember the name of it, it's like Sourcing Bay. Yes, I can confirm it is Sourcing Bay, if my phone would focus in there. And I'm running kind of like a confidence monitor here, where it's, I've got some of the program outs of like my various cameras and whatnot, and I've got a position so I can be in the same direction of my camera, so I can look up to my camera up there and just kind of eye down there and see that. So up here, camera, I am running the black magic micro cinema 4k and i've got a tt artisan like 14 to 24 millimeter lens I'll, I'll post all the descriptions and links down in the description below i've got a lot of random stuff here like these seven inch monitors from amazon they're like less than 100 bucks they're actually pretty good they're cheap and they work great they can even run on AA batteries so by the way if you guys haven't noticed uh, this is going to be a ramble video. My my brain is going to be, go all over the place, so please don't mind that. <laughs> I'm going to try to stay loosely focused as much as I can. So on the back side of the big screen here, I've actually got a Canon Vixia HF R800 mounted on the back for the foot cam. And it's been in a couple of different places, but that's where it is now, and I actually quite like its location. I quite like the, actually there's a Canon right up here too, it just runs on battery. Uh, I actually enjoy it. it. I started using it back in college when I was a videographer for the music department. It runs 1080p60, the bitrate is garbage, the quality is garbage, but it's 1080p60. So it works, it's got a little flip out um, screen, it's a touch screen, and the biggest part for me is it's got a clean mini or micro HDMI out. It's got a clean HDMI out. So none of the settings or whatever, none of the information on the touchscreen is, is being recorded at the same time, which is huge for the channel because you can go back to the first videos of my channel and see that those were the cameras that I was using for the face cam and the foot cam and all the rest of it. So it's, 
it works well it doesn't overheat it doesn't really crash often or anything and it just it just you turn it on and you hit record on the video recorder and it just works so this is where the unconventional is um kind of starts to bleed in a little bit so for those of you who had noticed on the confidence monitor down here some of you may have recognized that format and noticed that I was running a Blackmagic camera, so you were thinking, so what's he running? If we look over here, that's my tower PC that I'm laying on the side. I'm going to integrate that into this. This here is what makes everything run. It is my rack setup. Um, also down here, I've got the um, shifter and the handbrake from Fnatic. Just did a review on the shifter. I love it. It's great. Please buy it. But with this, this whole system, it's been work in progress for a while, and I've been doing a lot of a lot of wiring and a lot of figuring out what is the best way to go about this. So what we have here is the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. As a mouthful of a name. But the really cool thing about it is that it is able to record eight HDMI inputs at the same time at 1080p 60 at like 80 megabit, megabyte a second bit rate, which is super high quality. So it records them all individually. It records all eight HDMI audio feeds separately as well as well as two individual 3.5 millimeter microphone inputs. It has a 3.5 millimeter microphone or a headphone output and two HDMI outputs, which is big for a reason. So one of them I've got hooked up to the confidence monitor and the other one goes out the back and is to the TV. So if we go through and start going through, so uh, input seven, is PlayStation. So if I go to input eight, it turns black. That's because that is the PlayStation, uh, that is my computer. So back to input seven. Input six is the foot cam. Input five is the face cam. Hello. Uh, four, three, two, and one aren't actually connected to anything at the moment. So it's just really cool to be able to go through and play around with some of that. The ATEM Mini Extreme ISO is also extremely powerful where you can actually have the picture in picture. So we'll turn on this and then we'll go to DVE and then we'll go to five. So then we look at the screen here. There I am in the corner and then we can change the location. I'm down there now. I'm over there. I'm up there. And they can do stuff where you can do like side by sides like that. So honestly, really cool stuff. There's a whole like you guys can do a huge review. Just go down a huge rabbit hole on the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. There's so many amazing features out of it that I can't even sc start scraping the surface right, right now trying to talk about it. It's just there's way too much. All right. Microphone. This one is actually going to surprise a lot of you. I know it. It is an Audio Technica ATR2100X USB. And a lot of you are going, oh, what? Audio Technica, huge name brand. A lot of you know it. On my vocal recordings for my music, I normally do a. AT 2020 and that's the one that everybody is more familiar with but for a style of microphone like this like a dynamic microphone normally people don't really go to audio technica a whole lot they're really known more for the compressor microphones condenser excuse me condenser microphones um so this the only reason why i have it it's on the back side i don't know if you guys can really see it but it's got an xlr out and a USB-C, which is awesome. So you can simultaneously send a signal through XLR 
Actually, you can see a little bit better up here. Simultaneously from XLR and USB-C. So what I'm able to do is run the USB-C directly to my PlayStation. And then I can run the XLR into all of the audio production stuff going on here. So again, the Audio-Technica ATR2100X USB is routed from there down into the wires from hell into the back of the rack comes forward into the preamp so the first one is a dbx 286s it is a microphone preamp i think it's got a little bit of a compressor in there as well which i will show some of my settings there i don't know how well that's going to pick up on camera there but then another set of flashing lights below it that I just got within like the last couple of week or two is the DBX 266XS. And that is a compressor. Uh, down below that is a um, something that's actually not plugged in right now is a audio effects unit. A Behringer audio effects unit of some flavor, I think. And then the thing below that that you guys can't really see, I'll probably have to adjust the exposure and post, is a mixer, a Euro rack mixer from Behringer. So as you guys can tell down here, I've got a pedal board, so I'm really into music and all that kind of fun stuff. And then down here, I've got three blank panels because I'm going to take this computer up here and I'm actually going to put it into a server, a three unit server rack take the GPU, lay it sideways, get a different CPU cooler so it actually fits down in there. So then everything here is just one consolidated unit. And then down here, this is the coolest part, is I was able to get a power switcher where you can turn on and off all the switches. And it's super satisfying to when you sit down to record for the evening and just go down the line. Boom, 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 boom. It's a really tactile experience and you have to do it. You just have to. It's super good. But you're all sitting here going, well, I've got the computer. I've got all of this. Where am I hiding the PlayStation? I don't think you'll be able to tell. Actually, you might. There's a tiny white light back there. And what's going on is that on level three, I've got that Bluetooth receiver. And it's... So there are two sets of mounting points so you can screw in your devices here but they've got the same thing on the back side so on the back I've got all of those access panels and I've got all of those plugins for like the HDMI outs and uh, all the XLRs down there and then a couple of spots down there to have some cables to run through but then kind of up in here I've got this uh, rack Bluetooth receiver screwed in backwards that then again feeds into the mixer but sitting on top of it is the PlayStation completely hidden from view you wouldn't be able to tell that it's there um, so the my only concern that I think a lot of you have probably figured out by now is so how's the airflow I don't want to talk about that <laughs> So we've got up here, we've got this one unit panel grate. Um, but the apart from the first unit up top, which is all the, the plugins for the HDMI, there's a couple of spaces also of a grate. Then there's the Bluetooth receiver. And then there's like four or five units of grates. And then there's that bottom part. So I want to say the entirety of the back is kind of that graded mesh panel so it's not perfect because there's no really good air intake and i'm concerned that if by adding a computer down there that it's just gonna mess things up worse we're gonna find out when we get there <laughs> so um last but not least so that's what i've been working with that's what i've got now I am in a pretty good place. I love how all of this looks for the moment being. My next goal is probably to get a different TV. I'm debating if I want to 
potentially get uh, triple monitors, but that's more money and more monitors, and I just I run Gran Turismo on a single monitor, so it's fine. The thing that I've been thinking about recently is want to get the computer into the rack system. The top of the rack and the top of the wheelbase is pretty much level. So they got me thinking about what if I was to get like a dashboard and then I could get, I'll actually show here. So if we had this dashboard that goes over the top of the wheelbase, goes over the top of the rack, and then I really want to find a way to integrate the shifter and the handbrake because it just being mounted to the seat, I mean, it's functional, but I just, I would like to have a button box or something here. I thought about it where, you know, all the modern day cars, they have like the, oh, what do they call it? If they've got the infotainment systems. So I'm thinking that if I get like a car that's been totaled, but the interior is fine, I'd be able to put the dashboard and all that stuff here. And then right here would be the infotainment. I'd just take that and place it, plug it in there. So then this isn't just sitting there. It would suck because it's not underneath the camera anymore. But I mean, what are you going to do? Um, but then like it would be integrated with the setup. I don't know. Food for thought. And then I was noticing a couple other things as well. Headphones are Sony MDR7506s. They're pretty standard in the recording industry. I mean, they're comfortable. They're closed back microphone um, headphones. They just work great. Uh, specs for the PC uh, is going to be i7 9700K with 32 gigs of RAM with, uh, I'm trying to remember the GPU. I want to say it's a Gigabyte AORS 3070 Ti. Um, that's really about it for for that. It's 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 showing its age as far as the processor goes. Uh, GPU is fine, but it's limited to eight gigs of RAM, of VRAM, so a little bit bad for uh, 2024. But I'm only running 1080p. My monitor, my 32 inch monitor, is only. A 1080p screen which that is hopefully going to be upgraded i'm trying to find like a 4k 40 inch monitor which apparently they don't exist which is kind of weird so <sighs> again sorry for rambling i've had this in in the works for a while <laughs> um and i've gotten the the best part about it is that i've gotten to the point where I can sit down, I can turn everything on, I can hit record, I can see down to this monitor here how long it's been recording. I don't need to worry about the battery on the camera because that's plugged in, everything else is plugged in. I, it's, it's become incredibly durable, robust, and it's taken me seven, eight years to finally get to this point. I'm still actually, I'm still remembering my, my first setup. So it was that two laptop setup was back in 2015. So we're talking about like nearly nine years ago now. Ooh. And a lot of you are going to be sitting here going like, Oh my God, this guy's probably put thousands of dollars into this. I will admit. Yes, I probably have. A lot of it was put on credit cards. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Be smart with your money. Save up. You know, if you've got a monthly allowance, just save that money. Because the amount of times, especially in like 2017 to 2020, the amount of times that I would cheap out on a product and I'd throw it away a month later versus saving for an extra couple of months and then just having a product that I'll use forever. Do that. That's why the camera was a big deal. That's why getting the ATEM Mini Extreme was a big deal because I had wasted so many hours with various cameras and video recording equipment that would just crap out. And to have finally something robust, it's, it's just awesome. So I know this is gone on quite a bit longer than I was supposed to be, 
Sorry if I'm ranting or just kind of going over the same points again. I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy with where I am right now. I know because of my personality and how I operate. Even in this room, you guys can probably tell that the room layout has changed. I mean, if you look at my first couple of videos on the channel, like, it seemed like every three months the room layout would change in some way, shape, or form. And it did. It's, I am always looking for the next best, best thing. The, how we can optimize this setup a little bit better so it can be, you know, easier to hit something or easier to access something or, you know, does it really make sense that this is here or this is there type thing. Um, I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place right now because I really can't expand the setup outwards. I've already done so with the seat, but I've got a piano over there and a couch over there and this, the room layout is only... There are so many permutations that I can do here before I've pretty much hit them all and I pretty much already have gotten to that point. So, I don't know. We will see if I finally settle down and just let this be. Or if in six months I get bored again and then want to rewire everything and oh god. I'm hoping that uh, you guys learned a thing or two about me and my eclecticness and my weird way of solving a problem. The best thing about video production is that there's a million ways of doing it. But then there's the problem is, is that you can do it a million different ways. So I know this is more a video about my video production setup than it was really the sim racing the sim racing setup was really basic it's just the wheel the chair the stand the monitor and that was it <laughs> but just how it all runs it's super out there so i hope you guys enjoyed this that's i enjoyed making this and i hope i can salvage this edit of some way shape or form because this is again i am all over the freaking place and i'm tired and i'm just yeah <laughs> So again, thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, share in the comments what your setups are. If you are running some really weird kind of setup of your own where it's really janky or really weird, but at the end of the day, if it works, it works, you know? Or if it's just really basic, because at the end of the day, if it works, man, like... It, it doesn't have to be flashy or it doesn't have to be weird. It's the basics work. If you just have a PlayStation next to your wheel, next to your pedals that are on the couch, I mean, so be it. It works great, man. So that's my final piece of advice here. If there's some of you who are out there, they're sitting there going like, oh my God, this guy's got so much in there. I got to catch up to him. I got to, I got to collect the camera. I got to collect this. I got to do that. It's kind of touching on this earlier. Don't do that. Just be smart with your money. Try to buy things a little bit at a time. Because like I said, this has been nine years in the making and I've gotten to this point and I don't really have a whole lot of other hobbies. So this is just, I mean, I've got music, kind of, but like I've bought all the pedals and I've got the guitar that I want, so I'm kind of good for the moment. So, I mean, it's just I've put all of my money into the video production side of things. So, please don't use this video to go out and go dump 20 grand on stuff you don't need. Find what you want. Find what you know will work in your setup. Save for it. Make one purchase at a time, get it done, and then enjoy it. And that's where I'm at now. I am trying my best to enjoy it because it's been a long time coming. So, again, thank you so much for listening to this long rant of a video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.